you are using them. Make sure that you are using them. The Bible says if you don't use them, even the one that the people that have more and they are using, if we take it and give it to them, that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in, in John 10 verse 10, he says, uh, that is verse B, uh, 10B. He says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. That is what God has come. He has not come to crucify you. He has not come to condemn you. It is not because we sinned yesterday. And he seems to be our father. For me, if my children, they do something, I come down. And I scold them that last night. When they wake up in the morning and they are beating me, I will still remember what they did last night. But our daddy is not like that. God is not like that. Once you go to God and say, you are sorry, God has forgotten, he has forgiven, he has forgotten. If we are not working, if we are not living in the abundant life, we need to find out why. The word of God says, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, then you are free indeed. What is making you to be limited? What is tying you down where you are? Why is it that you cannot manifest what God has put in you? So the glory of God, God will open new doors for us in this month in the name of Jesus. In life, we must always seek to associate with people who have, who have a God-given vision. And they are driven by it. Who are your friends? Who are your associates? What do they know about you? Eh? Do you just join them and you do the same thing that, that other people are doing? Is, is it when you get to where your friends are? You, for, you forget you are a child of God. Now you start to do what they are doing. No. No, that is wrong. The devil will attack in such a way. And the devil only attack people that are carrying grace and favor. So if by adventure you are going through something, I congratulate you. Because God Almighty will open new doors for you this month. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Never allow repeated failures. Never allow defeat to, pre to prevent you from progressing in life. For the fact that you have failed in one thing doesn't mean you are, you are going to fail in another thing. It doesn't even mean if you repeat that thing, you will fail again. Somebody, I don't know, maybe it's, it was Brother Taylor that was telling us one day when he was teaching, and he was telling us about uh, electricity, how the person that did electricity has failed and failed and failed severally. But it was the same person that did it, and he got it right. You will get it right in the name of Jesus. I say you will get it right in the name of Jesus. God has control and power over everything, over everybody, over every situation, over every circumstances. Don't let the devil tell you what they don't have, what they can never give you. The devil don't have what you need in his hand. No. I was watching something yesterday. Was it yesterday or Friday? And uh, I, th I think I shared it on Friday. <laughs> it's very funny. When the husband, when the husband went to the Jewman for a child, and the woman went to Jesus for a child, the Jewman told the, the the man that in this month you are going to have a bouncing baby boy. But the pastor that prayed to the, for the wife didn't say the sex of the baby. Just say this month, ah, you are having a child. So at home they started fighting. It's a Mount Zion thing. They started fighting, and the man said, you know what? Do you remember what happened to Elijah? So that is what me and you going to do. When you give back, if you give back to a boy, then the boy, the, the, the boy belongs to Baba. But if it's a girl or twins, then it belongs to the <laughs> to Jesus. And when this woman gave birth, you know, ah, if she gave birth to a boy, and the man said, I told you, this man, this boy, Baba said it specifically, that the boy is, he, he will be bringing forth a son. But at the end of it all, God glorified himself. In our life, the Almighty God will glorify himself. I say God will glorify himself in our lives, in our situation, in our health. He will glorify himself in the name of Jesus. So enjoy the fullness of God. You must have a very strong faith. You must have an undying faith. You must ask that you can tell them that God, because I am, the, I, I am not the one that will do it. I know our, our Gio normally tell us, he said something happened one day, and somebody was talking, hey, how can Gio pray for you? How can Gio pray, and you don't, and, and uh, the situation, just as people was sharing this morning about the, the post, and Gio said, he said to them, Okay, if I have prayed and God did not do it, what about your own mouth? Why can't you use your mouth to pray for yourself? Why did you come to me? I'm, I'm not, the, my, own pray, my own thing is just 
to pray for you. I am not God that will do it. So enjoy the fullness of God. You must have a strong faith, an undying faith, that no matter what the case may be, what God cannot give you, nobody can give you. What God? I know people leave the church, they go to the uh, they consult one Baba and say, Baba, thank you for what you have done. And they come back to give testimony in the church. That will not be our case in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to overcome all doubts about the promises of God. Can God do it? Has he ever done it? There are things that God will say to you in this month that he has never done before to anybody that he wants to do for you. I want you to believe him. I want you to believe that he can do it. I want you to have a spirit of endurance and a spirit of patience. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I waited on the Lord. I waited on the Lord. What is it that you are waiting on God for? Patiently. Be patient and be endurant. You must understand and believe that God will never deny you of his blessing. No. He only works in his own time. Everyone here, they have their time. This week, we know that some of us must be at work by 9, nine o'clock. So God works by, by his own timetable. He works by his own calendar. And he, ha- he works by his own time. Your time will not elude you in the name of Jesus. What he has decided to do for you will not be given to another. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said there is hope for a tree. You will not plant and another begin to eat it. You will not build for another to, to inhabit in the mighty name of Jesus. Be obedient to the Lord. Be obedient to the Lord. He has the blueprint of everyone's life and he has solution to every of our problems. Be obedient. We all remember the sons of the prophets. They were cutting down the trees they, for enlargement. They were cutting it down. Meaning, an end to an ungodly ambition. If there's any ungodly ambition in our hearts, if there are other things that we are doing. I remember when Pastor Ayo came. Pastor Ayo came here on, on the 26th. Pastor Ayo said something that he said he was saying to somebody, to them in their church, that you as a woman, the way you are treating your husband, do you pray that your, your, uh, your son will be pre- treated by another woman like that? He said he was asking, he brought probably more out. He said, you are a minister, aren't you? He said, you pray that the way you are behaving to your pastor, that is the way you want God to behave to you, or you want people to behave to you when you become a pastor, will always determine your hearts. Be good to yourself. Be good to God. And God will accelerate everything that he wants to do in your case, in the name of Jesus. Do you feel trapped? Have you ever felt like you are at, at the end of your plan, or at the end of your rope? What is it? What do you do when you reach that point? Do you start running about Elta's Kelter? Do you start consulting friends who will now introduce you to some pastor who will say they are pastor, but you need can do? I can never forget this case that they had to consult Gio before he came to an end. They said they invited a prophet, a, a prophetess in a church in UK. And the prophetess came. The prophetess now gave them, all of them, women that are looking for children. He he said they should come to to the front. So she distributed black candles to them and told them that when they get home, they should go and light the candle and they will see what will happen. And uh, as soon as the woman left, the woman, the, you know his woman, women program, so it was for the pastor that invited him. And her husband said, no, what that woman did is wrong. What about a black, black, uh, black candle? What did they need it for? Anyway, they said they started collecting the black candle for them. There were two women had already gone. In fact, this case, this case had to get to Gio because in their sleep they started. I don't know what they started seeing because I didn't see it with them. Stand for God. Stand with God. You don't need any pastor. You don't need any one to do anything for you. Open your mouth to God. Wake up in the night. Tell the Almighty God how you feel. Is your father in as much as he is your pastor's father as well? Unless you need help and you are sure of the person you are asking to pray along with you. Don't just go to anyone. Don't let anybody. Uh, one of my father in the Lord in Lagos told me something. He said, ah, his church was like probably <laughs> worse than our own like this. But we thank God our church is not bad. He said, then he was talking, his friend gave him a lift, and he was talking, he said, ah, he said, reading Christian Church of God, he said, ah, pastor, you don't know how we do it, you need to come and know how we do it. 
And he was he was curious. He said, maybe there's evangelism or another way they do evangelism, I don't know. He said, no, what is it? Don't struggle. He said, I will take you to illumination or whatever they call it. Illuminati. Oh, God bless you, sir. He said, I will take you there. He said, that's where, that's where we go. And he, the man said, in the work of God, because of the work of God, he said that was the end of, of their friendship from that day. So he said he sat down and started looking at so many churches. And it was like, so this is what is going on. And people will come and they will be doing a kadabra. They will be thinking as there's something. No. Let's stand with God. Though it may tarry. Though it may take time. But it will surely, we will surely reach it in the name of Jesus. Jesus has, we can, we can always see Jesus house today. Ah, people are praying. Let's our church be like Jesus house. So. But there were times that Jesus house, they didn't, they didn't have a pulpit. They were using Gulda, uh, Gulda cutting. They had to mount Gulda cutting, three of them, and put cloth in it. That was their altar. Now, people are praying to be like them. It took time for them to break through. We will break through in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us have endurance. Let us be patient. Though it may tarry, it will surely come in the mighty name of Jesus. The only way it will come is if we are truthful to God, we are truthful to ourselves, we are truthful to the work that He has given to us, and we do not mix it with anything. God will show Himself strong in the mighty name of Jesus. What do you do when you are walking through a spiritual wasteland and there seems to be no way out? The devil is all out to oppose our moves of breaking our off limitations. But you have had the word of God today. Sit, sit by yourself today. Ask yourself, what do I need to do to break off from every limitation? What is it that I need to do? But I know that God will make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray. But before we pray, I want us to know that God loves us. I want us to know that God cares about us. I want us to know that God cares more than you know about. God cares for us. He is everything that we are facing. Not a single thing is hidden from God. Not one thing. The Bible says in Lamentation 3.37, it says, Who says, and it coming to pass, when the Lord has not commanded it? Mm. What is happening that God will look at it and say, I am accidental, I've never seen this back. No, it is not possible. It is not, there's nothing that has happened that God doesn't know about. He knows about it. But the Bible says in Psalm 2, he said, Psalm 2 verse, he said, he sits and he looks down. The Bible says he laughs. He laughs because of that situation, because he knows the end of that situation. He knows that very, very soon, one of our mothers shared testimony of a sister who had spent on. Oh, you know when you have spent everything, but you are still consistently consistent. You still believe that God can still do it. After 20 years, a bundle of joy that even double. Buy one, get one free. God gave to us. God will do more for us in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what we are called to face in this life, let's learn to turn to, Lord, to the Lord first for, for help you need. Don't turn for the, to your friend. God cares. God is able. He will work your need. Don't let your friend be the number one you will turn, turn to. No. They will misguide you. They will misadvise you. They will take you to the wrong place. God Almighty will help you. My mommy pastor, uh, Pastor Mrs. Bangoshe, my mother in the Lord, she had something with us in the church. She said when she lost her first child, she said a friend, a sister in the fellowship, said, ah, let me take her. Uh, let me take you to a pastor that will pray for you. She said, as they stepped in that pastor's house, all candles on the floor, around everything. She said she knew she was in the wrong place. She knew that she was in the wrong place. And they gave them oil. When you get home, this oil, put it on everything. Put, no, no. Let's kneel down. Let's talk to our father ourselves. We don't need anyone. Unless you want your pastor, you want a leader, you want a sister you trust. 
to hold on with you in, in fellowship, in prayers, in fasting. You don't need anyone that will be putting on candles for you. You don't need anyone that you will go there with one thing and come out with ten things. You don't want anyone that will take the destiny of your children away from them. You don't want anything that the little you have in your hand, they will remove it from you. It shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, to break off limitation, you need to take a decision. And this is where we are using our sister's uh, English to be intentional. You need a determination to succeed. And you need to refuse satanic distractions. There are times that the Satan will bring some things. For the fact that it looks well doesn't make it original. They will bring some things and say, ah, if you do it this way. Your pastor will not know. I think probably will share this here on the pulpit where MFM, I listen to it as well. Uh, MFM, one guy shared a testimony. As a, as a minister in the church, she went to her, his village and he was convinced to say, ah, please do this thing, your pastor will not know. And who will know? Unless you tell them, who will know that you have come to the shrine? He did all that they asked him to do. When he got back to the church, he took ill, isn't it? He took ill, he nearly died until he confessed to say, ah, this is what I have gone to do. There are things we don't do in the open that God, he, he himself wants to bring it out. I pray for you. We will not go through the wrong way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to rise up as we, as we thank the almighty God for his plan for this month. Let's thank the Almighty God for his plan for this month. Let's carry it. Let's pray. Let's thank the Almighty God. Thank you for your plan for this new month. I want you to speak to the month of September. Tell the month of September, hear the word of the Lord. You will be my month of testimony. You will be 